Now the men of the city said to Elijah, Behold, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. But the water is bad, and the land is, get this, unfruitful. We ain't getting nothing. And Elijah said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of the water and he threw the salt in it and said, thus says the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I have healed this water. Oh, my God. And from now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. <laughs> so the water has been healed to this day <sighs> according to the word that Elijah spoke. I'm going to drop back a little bit to verse 21 and I want you to underline this part right here where the prophecy goes forth and it said, thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. And from now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. And I want to use a simple subject this morning, healing from a toxic environment. That's what he said. I'm sending healing to somebody who has been harmed, damaged, bruised from a toxic environment. Let's pray. Lord, have your way today. Do what you do. And we'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Talked about healing from a... Y'all got me sweating already. I ain't even started preaching yet. That's a mess. We hear the term toxic being thrown around a lot these days. Yeah, I'm talking about toxic relationships, toxic women, toxic masculinity, toxic churches toxic parents and, and so forth and so on. We hear it so much that, in my opinion, it's really being overused because we tend to use it to describe anything that we don't like or agree with. So anybody that doesn't get with us, flow with us, follow us, line up what we line up on, we call them toxic. Just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I'm toxic. Just because we don't land on the same page doesn't mean that we have a toxic relationship. We may disagree. We may not see it the same way, but that doesn't mean that it's toxic. You can't label people with general brushes and call somebody toxic just because they don't like something that you said or something that you stand for or something that you believe. And that doesn't mean they're toxic. It doesn't mean we just disagree. And so the word toxic begins to lose its power and its true meaning because we use it as a blanket for everything. Everything. It amazes me that a couple can have a marital problem and he walks in and says she's toxic and she walks in and says he's toxic. And so both of them are complaining that this person is toxic. No, you're just having problems in your marriage. <laughs> quite, quite frankly, some of the stuff that we label as toxic, uh, it's just people behaving badly. It's just bad. You're you just not acting cool. Doesn't mean you're toxic. When, when something is toxic, it simply means it's poisonous. And it possesses the ability to harm or to kill others. And so it's often used as an adjective to describe a very negative person or a very negative environment. How many notice negativity is contagious? Negativity is contagious. You get around negative people or, or being a negative environment it has a way of sticking to you. If you get around people who always talk a lot of smack, who always have negative things coming out of their mouth, it, it can pull up. Well, have, you, have you ever had this happen? You ever been somebody who was very positive, very upbeat, and walked in the room with somebody who was very negative, and you was good till you got around them? And all of a sudden, I'm acting funny because I've been around somebody who's acting funny because negativity is contagious. Y'all not going to talk to me. And if, if you've ever had to work in a poisonous, toxic environment, you know as well as I do that sometimes it can make you physically ill. Just walking in the job. Just, I was fine till I pulled up to the parking lot and just walking in the door, I can feel it in my physicality. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just walking in the room, suddenly I need to go see the doctor because this environment is so toxic, so 
poisonous, so noxious that it makes me ill just to walk in. If you've ever had the misfortune of having to work in a toxic environment, you know what I'm talking about. See, I see. I discovered. I discovered this. This is what it is. I discovered that certain fish can't live in certain environments. Did you know that? That that you can't put freshwater fish in saltwater tank. Where the saltwater fish can live and thrive there, that, that, that freshwater fish can hang out in toxic environments. The pH level is too high. The toxicity is too high. Amen. The acidity level is too high. And while you can live there, I cannot. And that's why certain people can live in messy situations. But see, the way my Holy Ghost is set up, I can't hang up in messy situations. I, I can't hang out with messy people. If I sense that you're a messy person and you keep stuff going on and you like to keep a bunch of mess, my, where my spirit is set up, I can't, I can't rock with you. I can't roll with you. I love you, but I can't rock out with you because certain fish can't hang out in certain environments. I'm not built for that. In the same way, certain people can thrive in certain environments. They're not built for that. They're not built for gossip. They're not built for foolishness. They're not built for that. And I get it that you can live here. You can be a pig and hang out in the mud, but I can't. I'm not saying I can't get near it, but I can't thrive in it, right? I can't live in it. It doesn't feed my spirit. In fact, it kills my spirit. In fact, it kills my dreams. It, it kills my motivation. Just walking in the job kills my motivation. My job depends on me thriving and being the best that I can be, but you have created such a noxious, toxic environment that I can't even give you my best. Oh, oh my God. Somebody married to somebody who was so negative and noxious and poisonous, I would be a better woman, but just such a negative, nasty, mean person, you're not even getting the best out of me because while you like this nonsense, I cannot... I can't thrive there. I'm funny about church. I, I try my best to keep a, a, a positive atmosphere, to keep an atmosphere where the Lord can flow and where the Lord can grow. And sometimes we have to make decisions to move certain people out of positions of leadership or move them out of positions of influence, not because they're not good people, but because what negativity is so contagious. And when you have enough people creating an atmosphere that becomes noxious or poisonous or toxic, it starts affecting other people. And we have to make a decision, you know? Y'all not going to say amen today. Well, let, me, let, me, let me caution you here. Therapists, they're hesitant about labeling people toxic. Let me, let me just back up some. Therapists are, are really hesitant about labeling everybody toxic because some of it, quite frankly, I told you before, is just people behaving badly, right? We, we were watching uh, the shootings that were happening uh, all over the country. And the first thing that people want to say when somebody shot up a place is it must be mental illness. Because it, it, that's easy to put that label on it, mental illness, because they just can't believe that there is wicked people in the world. Some of this is not, is not mental illness. It's just wicked. You're just wicked. You're under control of Satan. You are being influenced by another spirit, a murderous spirit. That has turned loose in our grocery stores, in our school rooms, and in our playgrounds. In fact, I want to take a moment right here and arrest the spirit of murder. I want to arrest the spirit that makes it impossible for us to send our kids to school, to go to the grocery store, to go to the park. I got to be worried about some murderous spirit, some crazy person who's walking around with a gun that they shouldn't even have. I want to arrest that spirit right now. In fact, somebody pray with me right now. We bind that spirit. We bind that devil. We bind that. Undo oh, my God. Our kids will go to school in peace. Amen. We will be able to go to the grocery store. I will be able to go to the park and not have to wear a bulletproof vest because of some crazy person. Come on. I believe God. Arrest that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. That's just people behaving badly. But there is such a thing as a person who has toxic traits. <laughs> toxic traits refer to habits and behaviors and ongoing actions that harm people. They, this is what they do. Toxic people tend to be very self-centered, manipulative, controlling, critical, judgmental, narcissistic, 
hard to get along with. A toxic person's behavior adds negativity to your life because they're always saying or doing something that's going to vex your spirit, kill your dream, and drain your energy. I can always count on you sapping my strength. I can always count on you doing something that's going to make me want to flip out. I just know it when I saw you come in the door. I said, here they come. I got to start guarding my spirit and guarding my mind and getting myself ready. I got to get calisthenic. Certain people, you got to get in a certain mind to even deal with them. You know what I'm talking about? You got to get yourself ready. You got to do calisthenics and jumping jacks, you know, and do knee bends just to be in the room with them. Because they're so toxic and so negative, the moment they walk in, they seem to pull the air out the room. Y'all know those kind of people? They seem to pull the air out the room. I was having a good time lifting my hands, but when they walk in, it pulled the air out the room. I was doing my job and minding my business and you ain't have to see them. You can sense the spirit on them when they walk by. Y'all know people like that? But my concern today is this. Now y'all follow me. I'm taking a turn here. My concern today is this. We focus so much on trying to recognize, identify, and stay away or remove toxic people from our lives. We spend so much time trying to get them out or get them away or keep them away that it, it never occurs to us, Brother Adrian, that we might be the toxic person. <laughs> I'm so busy pointing out your toxicity and your negativity and, and, and your poisonous behavior that it never occurs to me that the me might be me. <laughs> That I might actually be the person who is poisoning the atmosphere. I might actually be the one who is speaking negativity into my group that creates such chaos that we deal with. I know that's not you. you we, see, we're good at pointing to other people, but sometimes God is pointing at you. Look at my say, he's talking to you. Yeah. And let, and let me explain. Let me explain why. Because, let me explain why. Because all of us are the sum of our experiences, good and bad. We've all gone through things that were good, and we've all experienced things that were bad. But the odd thing is the negative things seem to stick to us. Abuses, misuses, bad behavior of people, bad memories, bad experiences. Isn't it funny how positive things can happen for you and you have short memory, but anybody who's ever said anything bad to you, you remember that. That I can encourage you, inspire you, motivate you, talk to you. You got people support you and push you on, but, 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 but you don't remember what they said. But everybody, I mean, all the way back to third grade, you remember a little guy in the third grade who stole your cookies. And here you are 50 years old, and you still remember how you felt when little John John stole my cookies. That's, is that just me? I don't know. Negative things have a way of sticking to us. And, and see, here's the thing. It affects us. We don't realize it. Those negative experiences, they clog up your emotions and they affect us. They affect our future relationships. They affect how we do business. They affect the people that we come around and hang around and bring in or reject. All those negative experiences. You ever had it happen to you? You meet somebody for the first time. You don't even know them. But you say, you remind me of... My ex-boyfriend, my ex-teacher, somebody that says something smart to me. I walk up and say, hi, my name is Derek, and I remind you of somebody that had a bald head. And I don't like bald head men because you remind <laughs> In Israel, they have something that's called the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because everything flows in, but nothing comes out. It has water flowing in. And when the water flows in, it evaporates, but it doesn't go back out. So it leaves all these salt deposits so strong that nothing can grow there. No vegetation or nothing. And they call it the Dead Sea because everything goes in, but nothing comes out. And some of you are like the Dead Sea. Everything goes in. All those things happen to you. All those things come upon you and nothing comes out. How do I put it? You have stuff happening to you and things come into your life, but you don't excrete them. I'm sorry, that's... I hope that doesn't offend anybody this morning. You have no way of excreting all those negative things that come into your life or you're exposed to. So what happens is it accumulates in your spirit. 
And so after a while, you just come a big bag of negativity because we all go through things, but somehow it sticks with you. It doesn't come through you and pass out the other end. You don't know how to separate the good from the bad. You don't understand that sometimes things happen and they're sticking to you and you're holding on to whole issues, to old problems, to little things that people did to you. And listen, you may be making yourself sick. It may not be your spouse. It may not be your church. It may not be your environment. It may be you and your inability to let things go. Look at somebody say, let it out. Yeah, you got to let some of this stuff out. I know you can't help what happens to you, but you can help how you react to it. But if you take every offense and every issue and every problem, it begins to accumulate in your spirit, and you need to let it out. You have a dead spirit. Your worship is dead. Your service is dead. Your ability to go further. You can't go to the next level even in your career because right by the time they're about to promote you, you can't let go of somebody that did something to you and you forfeit what God was going to do for you. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to this morning? People who engage in toxic behavior, stay with me, are often just, listen, I'm going to show you help. I want to try to help you understand people. I try to understand people, right? And I realize that sometimes people who, who, who have toxic behaviors, they're just, they're just trying to cope right? They're just trying to cope with underlying issues. You want to slap a label on them and stick them in a corner and not be bothered with them, but please understand that they're, they're just people just like you. They just, they just have a way of having bad things stick to them. They have underlying issues. They have a history of trauma, a history of abuse. They have unhealthy family relationships, or they have addictions that they're dealing with, and it comes out in negative behavior. Are, are y'all with me this morning? It comes out in negative behavior. It comes out in bad talk. It comes out in bad conversation. They don't know how to process what they've been through. And everything they go through messes with their mind, messes with their spirit because they don't know how to get it out of their spirit. So it comes out. It just comes out in negative behavior, very negative behavior. And, and listen to this. They get stuck in negative patterns. That's what happens. They get stuck in negative patterns that poison themselves and everybody around them. That's what's happening. You want to put a label on them and put them in a category and say, that's a toxic person, leave them alone. But you don't understand that they're just a person who's trying to cope with things that they've had to endure or deal with. And so it's coming out in a negative way. But in reality, they're just somebody trying to cope. And in this room right now, I sense some people in here that you're just trying to cope. And people want to label you and mark you as a bad person, hard to work with, hard to deal with. Now they're, they're deciding whether to fire you or not because they don't understand that you're just somebody trying to cope. You're just somebody trying to deal with things that, that we don't understand or we don't even know. It's, it's, you cannot assume when you meet somebody that they are okay, that there are things that they are dealing with and they're coming out in very negative ways. And so... God wants to send healing from pe for people in here who have been exposed, not by your own doing, but by other things that have around you from a toxic environment. So, so in our text, in our text this morning, now I'm on my text. <laughs> Thank you. She said, take my time. I think I will. Uh, this scene occurs at the infamous city called Jericho. Some of you Bible scholars remember Jericho. Y'all remember the Bible students in here? Where you at? Wave at me, my Bible students. Y'all remember Jericho? Jericho was the first city attacked by the Israelites when they crossed the Jordan River into Canaan. It was that, that infamous city that resisted the Israelites. This was their first encounter. They just crossed the river, and they were going into the promise of God. And here was this city with these formidable walls that refused to move. That refused to change. And so, so God had them walk around the city seven times, amen, until, and, he, and on the seventh day they walked around seven times and they shouted until the walls came down. Ain't that something? That there are walls in your life that stand up and say, I will not be moved, but God, the power of our God is so powerful, he can break down walls. Yeah. 
I mean walls that have existed for years, walls that stood up in your life and said, I'm not going nowhere, habits and issues and addictions that have stood up in your life. Counseling couldn't get it out. Your mama couldn't get it out. Your girlfriend couldn't get it out. Your wife couldn't get it out. But by the power of God, he gave you a strategy. And when they shouted against the walls, the walls came tumbling down. For somebody right now, you ain't even got to hear the rest of the message. If you just shout right here, the wall standing in front of you will start coming down. You're not going to talk to me. If you would shout right here, the problem with some of you is that you're too quiet. You're too cool. You got your mouth closed, but you got to shout against that devil. I mean, shout against that addiction. Shout against that marital problem. Shout against those finances that refuse to come down. I'm going to shout right now until every wall the enemy tried to put up in front of me has to come by. Come on, let's do a little test. Somebody's got something standing in front of you. Jump on your feet and shout right now and watch God do something in your life. Oh, yeah. It's coming down, down, down. Every wall and every issue coming down, down, down. Every problem and every bulwark coming down, down, down. I feel somebody's problems coming down right now. I mean, long standing stuff is coming down right now. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Shout till that marital issue comes down. Shout till those kids come into line. Shout till you get a promotion on your job. Shout till you get a door open. Ah! Oh. Would you hit somebody on your way back to your seat and tell them, don't mind me, my walls are coming down. <laughs> yeah, my walls are coming down. <laughs> I feel something shaking loose. What? <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah okay all right let me come back i ain't done with you yet hold on i got an assignment so so what happened was because of the intensity of this battle in the heat of this encounter, in the heat of the battle, here's what Joshua did. He stood up and pronounced a curse. If you go back and read the story, at the end of the battle, see, y'all normally stop when the walls come down. You got to keep on reading. In the middle of the battle, Joshua stands up and pronounces a curse on that city and says that anybody who tries to build this city again, let them be cursed. There are some things that can affect you so bad that you just want to cuss it. Not curse it. <laughs> cuss it. <laughs> it was presumptuous. You know why? Because God didn't tell Joshua to curse no city. He told them to conquer the cities. He said that every feet, everywhere your feet trod, I'll give it to you. So every city that they encountered, he was going to have the victory over, put his foot on their neck, and gather more. He never told them to curse the city. That was presumptuous. That was presumptuous. And as a result, nobody since had been able to establish a city there because a curse ran through it. He was a city that God gave them, gave them the victory over, put his feet on their neck, and instead of praising God for it, he's throwing out curses. Be careful what you cuss. Be careful what you curse. You can't keep cursing every negative experience that you go through. You can't walk around cursing every job you went to, every church you went to, everybody. Because after a while, you're just accumulating nothing but a bunch of curses. Be careful what you curse. Because the Bible says this, that all things work together for the good to them that love all things. The good and the bad things are all designed to ultimately bless you. But if you curse everything you go through, in a lot of ways, you are cursing the thing that God used to encourage you or to advance you. What am I saying? I'm saying that some of y'all are cursing stuff that, that becomes a, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. He cursed a city that God intended for him to bless. You're burning bridges that you're going to have to climb over one day. 
let, let, let me go deep with you. See, see, this is why this is why God told people when people despitefully use you, Mark, bless them. Don't curse them. Bless them. You know what he's saying? You got to get it out of you. Because you stick around and have all these negative feelings and thoughts and ideas sticking to you, all of a sudden you become a great big garbage can that is full of nothing but cursings. Bless them. Don't curse them. Bless them. Even if it was your ex-husband. Yeah, I thought that gets you. Even if it was your, your ex-husband that did you wrong and he cheated on you, bless them. Go right on over there with a little Missy Poo and be happy. I bless you. Because what happens is if you let stuff stick to you, it starts accumulating in you. And here was a city that God gave them, but they couldn't enjoy it, Don, because the water was cursed. I was supposed to conquer it, but now I got a curse running through it. And it was never God's intention that any city he gave them, that it be a place of cursing. Even if it was hard, even if it was difficult, even if it was challenging, even the challenging things God takes you through is designed to develop you in some sort of way. But the problem many of us is you can't get anything out of it because all you see was what's wrong with it and you don't see what God developed in you out of it. You, you go through stuff and it makes you bitter instead of being better. And it was not God's intention to send you through anything to make you bitter, but everything God takes you through is designed to make you better. Look at somebody say, it made me better. She broke my heart, but it made me better. They fired me, but it made me better. He left me, but it made me better. They kicked me out, and they thought I was dead, but it actually made me better. Is there anybody in here who's going through stuff that messed you up, but it made you better? Y'all not going to talk to me. It made me pray better. It made me live better. It made me seek God harder. It made me pray with more intensity. My praise went to a whole nother level. Somebody that's going to a whole nother level, jump on your feet and give God a praise. That devil, oh, oh Lord, have mercy. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Is there anybody that's glad that it didn't work? not designed to make you bitter and what I see all over the church are people who are not better but they're bitter you survived it but you were damaged by it you made it out by the hair of your chinny chin chin but the person that came out is nowhere near like the person who went in that there are some people who can experience something and rather than them becoming people who have a powerful testimony or a word or an anointing, they end up being nasty and bitter and hateful. So now I got a bitter, angry person working at the door being a greeter. Sit down over here because I told you to. And all it is that you done went through some stuff that messed you up. Preachers can't preach encouraging message to inspire and to help people because we're mad at our membership. <laughs> I just want to tell you all, everybody's going to hell. And everybody, nobody's saved because they're bitter. And there's nothing worse than being around somebody who is in a position of leadership and authority who is now bitter. And I'm not saying that the things they went through was not legitimate. It was legitimate. It hurt you. It damaged you. It broke your heart. But if you don't get it out, it'll make you a bitter person instead of a better person. And why am I talking about this? Because somebody in here, there's an anointing down in you. There's a word down in you. There's something God wants to do through your life, but I can't get it to flow out of you because you're too mad and you're too upset and you're mad at your last pastor and you're mad at your last boyfriend and you're mad at the last job and you can't be a good employee now because you're still mad about a job you left six months ago and God said to take you to the next level I got to heal you from a toxic environment even if the environment was created by you y'all y'all not going to talk to me this morning y'all want to shout y'all want to dance but I'm trying to feed you the word of God on this morning if you don't get it out of you and you carry that hatred around in you it creates a situation. So write this down. Number one, let's talk about the situation. He cursed the city. 
And this city was a contradiction. Because here it was. It was situated beautifully. They said, as you can see, man of God, this is a beautiful situation. They, they followed the first law of real estate. Location, location, location. It's a beautiful location. But the water's bad. You're a contradiction. Oh, my God. Outwardly, it was perfectly and beautifully situated. Imagine this lush piece of real estate. It's sitting out there. Oh, my God. I just feel so blessed to even better find this piece of real estate. But the water's bad. How can something, how can, so, here's the contradiction. How can something this good be so bad? How can something this beautiful, beautiful to the eyes, be this barren and poisonous? Toxic people are a contradiction. On the one hand, they may be beautiful people, okay? Beautiful women, handsome man, well-dressed, successful, articulate, gifted on the one hand. But on the other hand, they hurt and they damage everybody around them. You, my friend, are a contradiction. You are a contradiction. Everything about your external says one thing, but your internal says something else. Everything about you gives the hopeful bride or the hopeful husband the idea that you would be the ideal person to marry on the outside. But if you dig a little deeper, there's something on the inside that makes you disqualified. You have the broad shoulders, the articulation, the education that you could be a very successful preacher, but you're so mean and so hateful that though you have all the externals, you don't have the internals, the integrity that somebody needs to be anybody's leaders. Oh, my God. Y'all looking uncomfortable. So, 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 so what this society does is we focus a lot on the externals. We spend a lot of money on our hair and put nothing in our head. Huh? You put all kind of money on your body, but you take your body everywhere it shouldn't be. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to step on nobody's toes. If I would just look at a still picture of you, I would think you're a wonderful person. That's why social media is so misleading. Because on social media, you could be anybody that you want. I just take about 20 pictures, find the perfect picture, put it up there, and you think you know everything just because you saw a picture. You don't know these people. You don't know they crazy and deranged. You don't know that they be tripping. You don't know they want to murder three people. You don't know they don't keep a job. You just saw his broad shoulders and pearly white teeth and said, oh, that's my baby daddy. You don't know he won't even keep a job. He got about 15, he's about 15 babies out there. But oh, come back, Faison, come back, come back, bring it back. They, they ain't ready for all that this morning can something this beautiful and that's what makes it frustrating can I be honest Charlene this is why when you get these kind of toxic people in your life it's hard to get them out because you're on the one hand you think oh my god she's so beautiful I can't let her go but on the other hand she's so toxic you can't stand to be around her more than five minutes <laughs> you ever seen those people and it, and it frustrates you and confuses you because my, my, the one side of my brain says they're okay, they're good, they're cool as a fan, I want to keep them around. But the other side of my brain says you got to watch yourself, you got to wear a bulletproof vest, you got to sleep with one eye open, you got to watch your money, watch your wallet. Come on, y'all not going to talk to me this morning. On the one hand, they seem like an ideal employee, but on the other hand, we got to lock up anything because we're trying to have shrinkage at the job. Nah. Yeah, I can't figure this out. I'm your contradiction. <laughs> Y'all getting something out of this? I hope you are. James 3 and 11, he describes these people as fountains that bring forth both bitter and sweet water. That these people who are a contradiction are people who are like a fountain, one fountain, that springs up sweet water and bitter water. You ever seen those people? On the one hand, you are mighty in the scriptures. On the other hand, you just soon cuss me three ways from Sunday. On the one hand, when you sing, the whole room swoons underneath of your talent. But when you walk off the stage, you are mean and nasty and hateful. 
On the one hand, you're somebody that we love to be around because you look so good. But on the other hand, you're somebody that I can't tell my business to because you're going to spread it. And we are a contradiction. You're having cursings and blessings come out of the same fountain. That's amazing to me that the same mouth that will, that will encourage me and bless me will turn right around and curse me and curse me. And I'm not talking about a different mouth. I'm talking about the same mouth, this schizophrenic behavior that you have. Have, this person that's double minded that's double thinking that you can't tell if they're a friend or an enemy because they're a frenemy because out of the same fountain is coming both sweet water and bitter water you are a contradiction oh to everybody else you're the bomb.com but the people that really know you you're poisonous and I don't know about you but I'm tired of being a contradiction I'm not just talking about the behavior. I'm tired of being a contradiction in my money. I'm tired of saying I'm a child of the king, but I live like a pauper. I'm tired of saying that God is a healer, but I ain't got healing in my body. I'm tired of anybody else. You tired of being a contradiction? I'm tired of helping everybody else with their kids and my kids be showing off. You're not going to talk to me. I'm tired of being able to help everybody else with their marriage and give them wisdom and advice and good information, but I can't fix my own marriage. Look at somebody and say, I'm tired of being a contradiction. I need my life to line up. If I'm the blessed man of God that I am, I want to be blessed in every area of my life. I want to be the head and not the tail. I want to be above and not beneath. Anybody that believes that, give God a shout right here. God's about to make you touch three people say, my life's about to line up. My life, I am blessed. I am healed. I am delivered. My life's about to line up. And that's the situation. But let me talk about the source because we got to go bigger. We got to go deeper. Number two, let's talk about the, about the source. I want to talk about the source because we tend to treat the symptoms, but we never address the source. So even when we deal with people in counseling, deal with people that are hard to deal with, we, we typically take the leaves off the tree, but we never get down to the root of the tree. The source was the spring that the water flowed out of. The problem, Mark, was the water. It wasn't the land, it was the water. The water is the life-giving supply. Nothing can live without water. No plants, no trees, no animals. Nothing can live without water. But the water was contaminated. And isn't it frustrating to realize that you can have all this stuff on the outside and the water is contaminated. It smelled. It had parasites in it. It had flies. You know, because flies had to, had to hang, like to hang around dead things. And some of you wonder why dead people like to hang around you. It's because you are stagnant water. If certain people are comfortable around you, it's because you ain't got no life to give. And when you're a lifeless person, all the lifeless people like to hang around. Oh, my God. Toxic people are like stagnant water. Stagnant water has no fresh water flow. It just sits there and it pools and it becomes unbearable to drink. It's contaminated. The water in Jericho had gotten so bad, sis, that all the fruit, catch this because this is going to bless you, all the fruit-bearing trees would cast their fruit before it was ripe. That's how bad the water was. It was so bad that even if there was the ability for a tree to bring forth fruit, pow, it would fall off and rot right on the branches. The water was so bad, uh, uh, Brother Don, that if you were a pregnant woman and you drank the water, or if you were a pregnant animal and you drank the water, it would force you to miscarry. Just drinking the water. You could be eight, nine months along and drink that water and it would cause you to abort your baby. Oh my God. And if you wonder why your dreams are not flourishing, it could be because of what you're taking in. If you wonder why your dreams are not coming to pass, if you wonder why you are pregnant with dreams and possibilities, if you're wondering why God has impregnated you with a dream, but somehow it always aborts and somehow never comes to pass, check the water. Check what you're taking in. 
You're taking in negativity all the time from the things you read to the things you do to the places you hang out with from the people you get information from that there are some people that you can't have up in your marriage. I'm sorry. There are some people you can't have up in your business, but you surround yourself with these negative people and toxic people and poisonous people. And you're drinking that in, not realizing that drinking that water is causing you to abort your baby. Somebody right now, you got to be careful because God has put a vision down in you, a business idea. And sometimes you can't share your dream with everybody because when they start poisoning your spirit, you won't go after it. God, is there anybody here that God has given you a dream? God has given you something ahead of you. God has given you a vision. But you got to be careful when you're carrying that vision that you don't ingest the ideas of other people as they project their fears on you. Projecting their fears on you will make you mess up your own business idea. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Ah, you got to use common sense. Ah, and they will cause you to abort your ministry, abort your business. Am I talking to anybody in here? Somebody here right now, you would do great things, but you keep ingesting water from people who are noxious and toxic, and it's causing you to abort your baby. Oh, my God. But I come to tell you right now that somebody, your baby's going to live. Oh, my Lord. Listen, listen. We, we, we have to frequently wash our spirit or rid ourselves of things that poison our spirit. You got to do it often. You got to wash that out. You can't help what they're saying on the news, but you can't help whether it stick to you or not. You can't stop negative people from talking, but you can stop you from letting it get in your spirit. I can, and I can't let it. And that's, this is why you got to watch people. I love you, but I can't hang with you. You my dog, but I can't let you around me all the time because getting around you make me abort my dream and my vision. And I love you, and I'm going to always support you, but I can't have you around me because I can't keep having these miscarriages. I'm on my third, fourth and miscarriage. I could have had a baby by now, but I keep drinking in that poison you're feeding me. Oh, my God. In the Old Testament, the priests the priest would wash at a place called the laver. They would wash it was a big pool with water. They were washed before they went into service. Before they, but by the time they walked across the courtyard and walked across the yard, that their feet would be dirty with just the journey. And by the time they came up to the place they were going to serve God, they had to wash first before they went into service. And the problem with many of you is you're trying to go into the service of God with all this junk on you. He said and she said. And they said and opinions and ideas and you wonder why we don't have powerful services is because we get ready to have service we got all this junk on us that's why we worship we don't worship to give you something to do to add something to the service we worship to wash out of us all the negativity that we got all week long I've been around co-workers that talk crazy I've been around demonic spirits I've been around family that's pissing me off I've been around all this kind of stuff and all week long and when I get in God's presence I get to wash out of my spirit Spirit, y'all not going to talk to me. I wash out of my spirit all those things. Somebody do it right here. Begin to worship right here. Lift your hand. Begin to worship right here. Because God wants to clean all that stuff out of you. You got too much junk. You got too. Listen, my sister, you got too much potential to let those devils destroy you. But God said, if you wash that out of your spirit, I'll take you to a whole nother level. Somebody worshiping right here. Y'all not going to worship for real. I put an emphasis on the word at the Impact Church because the Bible said we are clean through the washing of the water of the word. How shall a young man cleanse his way and how shall a young man clean his path? By the word. It's the word that washes out of us all the toxic stuff. God said your dream will flourish if I could just get the toxicity out of you. Ooh, lift your hands right here. God said, I'm just here. I'm doing surgery today. I'm getting out some stuff. I'm sucking out some poison. Somebody been bit by a snake, but I'm trying to pull the poison out of you before it causes your heart to collapse. Oh, my God. It, I can't help the snake bite you, but I'm going to pull the poison out. God said, I'm going to pull the poison out of somebody's spirit. They've been poisoning your mind, Connie, and poisoning your mind, Deacon, and trying to get you to leave your church and leave your husband and leave your job. But God said, I'm going to pull the poison and out of you so that you can live. Somebody throw your hands up and say, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Last thing I'm doing, I'm going to talk about the salt. Because 
when they took the man of God to the spring, they said, here's the source right here. Here's the problem. The reason why the trees ain't growing because the water right here. Here's the problem. The reason why my dreams are not coming to fruition I done been place to place to place and church to church and my dreams are not coming to fruition. I, I keep saying it's the church, but the real truth matter is I, I got some toxic things down in me. And he went right to the source and he said, bring me a new cruise or bring me a new bowl. Bring me a new bowl, a new vessel, a fresh vessel. What am I saying? Some of y'all got to stop going back to people and places that broke you. You keep expecting new behavior from people who have damaged you and hurt you. And sometimes you got to wash your hands of it and get you a new bowl and a new vessel and somebody that's for real in your life. Stop keep going back to people and thinking they're going to be different. They already showed you who they were. They're already contaminated. They're already tainted. They already showed you they don't love you and they don't support you. And who is that that said when people show you who they are, you got to believe them. I'm going to sit down because y'all getting bored. You got to leave some people alone because you know what they're going to do. When you pull out your dream, you know they're going to throw cold water on it. Leave them alone. Bring me a new vessel. Bring me. That, that's, why, that's why I got to get around some people who have a fresh relationship with God, who have a fresh prayer life. I can't get around people who want to wallow in self-pity and foolishness and gossip and drama. Every once in a while, you got to move to the other side of the church. Y'all not going to talk to me. You know how when we come in church, we find our favorite person in our favorite seat. But when you recognize it got too much toxicity, you got to move to the other side of the church and find you some fresh people. Some of y'all ain't got to leave the church. All you got to do is move to the other side of the church and you meet a whole nother culture of people who will praise God, who will give God glory, who will lift him up. I want to know if you sit next to somebody that's giving God glory right now, lift your hands and give him glory right here. You might be sitting beside somebody who don't know what you're talking about. And if you are, get up and move and go find somebody else because I got to get near some fresh water. <laughs> uh, look at somebody say God's going to do something new God, God's going to put some new people around you some new friends that support you some new people that believe in you and I know you're going to cry over the people that left but some of the people that left they needed to go oh my God I got to sit down I'm preaching too long already some of those folks you left they needed to go and if you needed them for your destiny God would have never pulled them from you if you see people keep leaving you stop going to go get them leave them alone God doesn't know oh my God God doesn't need whatever they need in fact they were the thing holding you back I was wondering why I couldn't sleep at night I was wondering why I couldn't get my dream off the ground I was wondering why my ministry was being held back I was wondering why doors were closing it was because I was hanging out with the wrong people get you some new folks Some folks with a new mind, with a new mindset. Sometimes they can be the same person, but they got the same mindset. If they have a new mindset, they're safe. And he took the new bowl and he put salt in it. And they took the salt and they threw it in the spring. Now wait, now wait, now wait, now wait. Salt in the scriptures always has healing and preserving qualities to it. He took the salt, and I want to put some healing in the spring. God knows how to put the band-aid where the ouch is. God knows how to get to the heart of the issue. God knows how to get all the way down to the things that are really affecting you. You're a cute person, but your water is bad. And before I can use you to go to the next level, I got to clean your water up. See, I, I want to raise you up and give you more influence, but I got to clean this water out. You're like a septic tank. I got to clean all this out before I can take you to the next level. Oh, oh, oh. Because if I let you go to the next level with all this stuff on you, you're going to mess up whatever I'm going to put you in. Yeah. 
Good Lord of mercy. Before you meet your wife, I got to clean some stuff up out of you. I know your divorce was bad, and I know it hurt your feelings, but before you go on your next date and meet your next boo, I got to clean out some negativity that came out of you because of the whole situation. You're not going to talk to me up in here. Before you become the next preacher or next pastor or next deacon or next whatever, I got to clean some stuff out of you because if I don't clean it out, the same thing that messed you up before is going to show up later. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in here? Am I talking to anybody here today? I got to clean it out. I got to heal some stuff. I got to fix some stuff, Mark. I got to answer some questions. Some of us can't sleep at night because we're plagued with the question of why. It's been three years, and you're still enumerating all the things that you went through with that man. And it's time for you to get healing. I can't enjoy my new church because I'm still mad about my last church. You need healing. I can't enjoy my new job, even though they're paying me more money because I'm still mad about the manager on my last job. And if you're not careful, you will drag your past into your future until your future begins to look like your past. Oh, I'm preaching it here. I'm preaching way better than y'all talking. I'm preaching way better than your reality. Somebody right now, you're in danger of letting your past mess up your future. You're in danger of letting the things you went through before, of letting the things you had to endure before mess up what God is doing right now. Look at somebody say, let the past be the past. This is a new thing, a new day, and God is putting salt on my wound. Oh, my God. God is healing me. God is preserving me. Why are you talking to us so tough, Pastor? Jesus said that you are the salt of the earth. You, 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 you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, what good is it to be thrown out? What good is salt if it can't preserve nothing? Some of you, God can send you into new situations. You've been called to heal the wounds of this city. You've been called to heal the wounds on that job. Maybe God put you on that job so you could change the atmosphere. Not to run from the atmosphere. Maybe God has put something down in you. Everybody around you is hateful and negative, and the VP is negative, and the admins are negative. And maybe God planted you there at least for that season so that you can be the change that the atmosphere needs. Oh, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe God called you to this church to change an atmosphere rather than you being critical. Maybe God called you to do something about it. Lift your hand and say, God sent me on a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. God put something down me. God put something down on me to heal, to minister, to bless people, to help people. Paul said like this. He said, let your conversation always be seasoned with salt. Let your conversation, that when you have conversations or your lifestyle, let it always be seasoned with salt. There is a way to say something to people. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Sometimes you can tell the truth, but the way you position it will damage people. And I need some salty people in here. Where are all my salty people at in here? You, you think you're doing us a favor by sitting in the back and being quiet. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to do it. But God said, I put the salt down in you because this meat needed some saltiness. I needed some nice people at the door. I need some nice musicians. I need some nice deacons. I need some nice people. I need some people who know how to treat people. I need somebody who knows how to speak a word and not tear people down. Is that you? If that's you, give God a praise right here. But you can't do it if you ain't healed yourself. You can't heal a city if you're not healed yourself. You can't heal your marriage if you're not healed yourself. Baby, it's not just him. It's you too. He may have issues, but so do you. And you can't fix something that you broke. Oh, Lord. I'm going to have to go back and watch this video myself. You you can't break me and then come by and call yourself fixing me. You broke me. Leave me alone. You're the reason why people don't come here. They don't come. It's because of your mouth. 
You talking about the church. You saying ain't nobody living right. You saying ain't nobody saved. You want to talk about your job, child. They don't live nothing at my church. And then you want them to come on family and friends day. No, I ain't coming. You done poisoned me already. I, I knew Connie before I knew Connie. Because <laughs> somebody poisoned me against them. And we need people who can walk into a situation and begin to speak healing. And you can't do it if you haven't received it. Lift your hands right here and say, God, I receive it. Come on. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what you've gone through this week. I don't know what you've gone through in your life, but you've gone through some things that have damaged you, and God wants to heal you right now. God wants to fix some childhood issues. God wants to fix some things you've gone through, things that broke your heart, things that broke your spirit. God right now wants to begin to heal you because he's got an assignment for you. I'm not done with you yet. I want you to do something powerful and something effective, but before I do something outside of you, I want to do something down in you. Somebody lift your hands right here. Lord, heal me. Heal me right here. Heal me right here. Heal me right here. And here's what happened. Here's what happened. It wasn't just the salt, sis. It was the prophecy. Lest you think that the power was in the salt. Mark, the power wasn't really in the salt. It was the word he spoke. He prophesied to a city that was toxic, contaminated, damaged, ruined, aborting babies, killing plants. Hear the word of the Lord that was so powerful that he spoke and said, Thus saith the Lord that this water shall no longer bring forth death and miscarriage from this day forward I speak the word of the Lord that you will no longer be negative you will no longer be depressed you will no longer be bound you will no longer be torn down you will no longer be frustrated but you will bring forth somebody give God praise if you receive that word right now you're not receiving it you're not receiving it you're not receiving it. You're not receiving it. The word of the Lord is being spoken over you right now. I'm healing some stuff right here. Lift your hands and begin to give him glory. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I feel like leaping up in here.